Hey y'all, Kerry Werner, Bike Flight's brand ambassador here with what else? A year end wrap up. To highlight some of my favorite moments from Kerry's Corner this year. As 2022 comes to a close and 2023 draws closer, I think it's important to look back over the past 12 months and pull some key takeaways as we head into the new year. For example, we have covered how to ship internationally, how to sell your bike and gear online, the new BBXL, and what to pack for a gravel event, among others. All of those videos were great and touched on important topics, but there are four videos in particular that I wanted to look at in greater detail before we close out 2022. First, let's look at the video we did about what cases we recommend. Choosing a boxer case can seem like a no-brainer, but there are a lot of options out there, some good and some bad. But if you stick to these basic principles, it doesn't matter which brand you buy, you can be assured that you will have the protection you need. The first and most important thing to look for in a box or case is that it protects your bike well. That means padding all around the case, padding and special bits for protecting items inside the case, such as foam blocks or padded wheel bags. Cost, of course, is an important factor and affordability is great but don't spend too little on a case. Having a case or box that's easy to pack and easy to transport with removable carrying straps or shoulder straps. Also, size matters. A smaller case or box will get you a better shipping rate, but you'll also have to take your bike apart more to fit it in the smaller box or case. Next, let's look at the video we did about how to pack your e-bike. With e-bikes becoming increasingly popular, there's no question that more people want to travel with them. Who would want to rent and go through that hassle as opposed to shipping your own setup to your ride destination? Considering you cannot fly with your e-bike battery since batteries on flights are limited to 100 watt hours, shipping your e-bike is the only way to go. However, there are some precautions required to ship your e-bike instead of your regular bike. First, you'll want to lower your battery charge to less than 30% to limit cell to cell combustion. Power off your battery and leave it installed. Remove any keys and ensure that your battery cannot turn on during transit. Protect your e-bike and its battery by using lots of extra dense foam padding. Pack your e-bike into a large and sturdy box rated for e-bikes, such as the Bike Flight's Bike Box Large. Finally, completely remove all bulk hazmat shipping markings, like these. This seems super simple and mundane, but the impact can be immense, and that is taking photos of your shipment. What I mean is if damage occurs to your shipment, you can open a claim with a bike flight's support team representative. And having photos of your shipment is a crucial way of streamlining your claims experience. In the event of damage, your photos show what condition your bike was in before and after shipping, and they document your pro packing job. So here's a quick rundown. On the pre-shipping side, take photos as your bike hangs in the stand, complete. Then take photos of it wrapped up like a Christmas present with pipe foam and or other padding. Then show how you placed your bike in the boxer case with wheels and extra bits. Finally, after the boxer case is zipped or taped shut, take some photos at a lot of different angles showing the initial condition of the boxer case. Then on the post delivery side, immediately note and take photos of any changes to the box, such as holes, dents, markings, or even tape that was added during shipping. These could be indicative of damage inside, although oftentimes it's just your boxer case doing the job that it was designed for. Once you open your boxer case, you want to take photos to document specific damage inside, such as cracks, broken items, missing items, etc. Ultimately, you can delete these photos if you don't need them for the claims process. And finally, a little bit of controversy never hurt anyone. Should you ship or fly with your bike? This is quite a hot topic these days, while airlines have switched their bike policy to only charge a standard check bag fee for bikes weighing less than 50 pounds. On the surface, this initially seems like the cheapest way to do it, but saving money at the check-in counter could lead to other costs down the road. Consider how you're getting your bike around once you land. You may have to rent a bigger rental car or call an Uber XL. Also, if you need to travel with tools or spare parts, you may be out of luck because of the 50 pound weight restriction. Try to fly with 52 pounds and that'll ding you $200 one way for an overweight bag fee. When it comes to shipping or flying with your bike, you are responsible for checking all the boxes for safety and protection. However, sometimes things do happen. It's important to note that shipping carrier accidental loss or damage rates are around one or 2%. 
whereas airline loss or damage claims are 4 to 6 percent. It's also important to note that the maximum amount of coverage, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, is $3,800. That means that the available coverage amount is often less than the value of most bikes. On the other hand, Bike Flights offers premium protection in amounts up to $20,000 to help you cover the full market value of your bike. For a more detailed look at the videos mentioned, check the links in the video description. With only a few days left in 2022, enjoy it. But as 2023 moves in and you start to plan new adventures, races, and trips, just remember the Bike Flights team is here to help with packing and shipping related videos to make the process easier and the journey that much more enjoyable. Don't forget to give this video a like. And if there's one New Year's resolution you should make, it's subscribing to the Bike Flights YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See y'all in 2023.